Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Last December, I resumed the learning and evolving from past practitioners series. Recently, I have introduced Shang Yunxiang, founder of the Shang Yunxiang branch of Hebei Style Xingyi, and Chen Fake, a Tai Chi legend of the last century. Today, I will introduce Cheng Youlong, a Cheng Style Ba Guan master who lived about a century ago. By the way, my Cheng Style Ba Guan is mainly from Cheng Youlong's line. My main Cheng Style teacher was Fu Shoubo, who studied with Cheng Youlong in Tianjin. Learning about important practitioners in history, their experiences and their learning paths gives us a lot of valuable information and serves as inspiration in our own practice journey. As mentioned previously, the objective of knowing about famous practitioners is to discover how they practiced, not merely learn what they practiced. In other words, we should learn their path of practice. Before we get to our main topic, Let's first warm up with Dao De Jing commentary and Xiu Dao. Today, we will talk about one important sentence from Chapter 12 of Dao De Jing, Wei Fu Bu Wei Mu, or to satisfy one's belly rather than one's eyes. Following the last chapter in which Lao Zi introduced the concept of the importance of emptiness. He continued introducing three external factors that can satisfy our sensory needs but go against the principle of a Tao. Those three external factors are colors, sounds, and tastes. He said, quote, 五色令人目盲, 五烟令人耳聋, 五味令人口爽, end quote. Translation. Five excessive colors make people blind. Five excessive sounds make people deaf. Five excessive flavors rob people of their taste. End translation. Then Lao Tzu continued to criticize two attitudes and behaviors by saying, quote, 驰诚, 甜烈, 令人心发狂, 难得之祸, End quote. Translation Violent running and hunting disturb the emotions of man. Greed for rare objectives is harmful to the action of man. End translation. In other words, excessive devotion to chasing about and pursuing things agitates the mind with insane excitement. Greedful riches in sinners one's efforts to pursue healthier motives. So, what is the right attitude and behavior? Lao Tzu gave his answer in the following sentence, which is also the core sentence for today, called 是以圣人为父不为目, 故去彼取此, end quote. Translation, to satisfy one's belly rather than one's eyes, he put away the latter and six the former. End translation. Here, Fu means belly, which represents inner. Mu means eyes, which represents outer, which is the function of the eyes observing things externally. Put together, it means that people should attend to the inner and not to the outer. So, for more than 2000 years, Taoist practitioners have adopted the concept of Wei Fu or for belly to guide Xiu Dao practice. Fu means inner, the opposite of the eye, the outer. Taoist practice is to gather energy from the universe and merge it with the inner energy, then further refine them. Also, Taoist internal practice is the reverse flow action oriented system in which 
one should change the ordinary approach to the Tao's approach. For example, our eyes are used to observe surrounding subjects, which is considered an external oriented activity. However, in Xiu Dao practice, the eyes have to close and observe the inside of the body at a certain point. For example, during the preparation part of a practice. This is why Xiu Dao practice is the reverse flow activity and inward observation with eyes is just part of it. So, Wei Fu or for belly means that a practitioner should focus on the lower Dantian area, which is the word Fu in this term stands for. Wei Fu or for belly is commonly translated to focus on lower Dantian when interpreting this term according to Xiu Dao practice. Furthermore, Wei Fu or for belly works with another term Shou Zhong or focus on the middle to express the Xiu Dao. As for the term Shou Zhong, I have introduced it in a prior video titled Decoding Martial Proverbs 13. Please have a look if not yet. Link is in the description. <coughs> in summary, Lao Zi used the term Wei Fu Bu Wei Mu or for belly rather than one's eyes to express his self cultivation concept. Now, let's move on to today's main topic the introduction of Cheng Yulong. So, topics covered in today's video include First, who was Cheng Yulong? Second, Cheng Yulong's practice. Third, key characteristics of Cheng Yulong's Bagua. Fourth, contribution. Fifth, demonstration. Sixth, takeaways and inspirations. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Who was Cheng Yulong? Cheng Yulong was the oldest son of Cheng Dinghua the founder of Cheng style Bagua as well as one of the most important disciples of Dong Haichuan in Beijing. Now, let me show you an old photo. This is a very well recognized Bagua history photo since many people believe the second person on the right to be Cheng Tinghua, the Cheng style founder. Actually, the person in the photo was not Cheng Dinghua. It was his son, Cheng Yulong, the one we will introduce in this video. Since Cheng Yulong closely resembled his father and his father did not leave behind any photo, many people mistakenly believed it to be Cheng Tinghua's photo, which is wrong. Cheng Yulong practiced Bagua with his father, Cheng Tinghua. His main style was Bagua, but he did practice Tai Chi and was also a key person of that style, which I will introduce in the next section. Cheng Yulong was born in 1872 in Beijing. He followed his father in Bagua training when he was a kid. Later on, around the age of 18, he started working in the caravan protection business with his uncle Cheng Dianhua, the third brother of his father Cheng Dianhua. After his father passed away when the eight countries invaded Beijing, he moved to Tianjin and worked for the Tianjin government in the military section. When he got older, he moved to Jingye An, a Taoist temple in Tianjin. He sometimes lived at his students' homes in his later years, but most of the time, he preferred living at that temple. That temple became his main teaching location named Jingye Guoji Yan Jiu Shi or Jingye Martial Arts School. He taught Bagua to many of his students. Especially after moving to Tianjin, he spent most of his time promoting Cheng style Bagua. Also, after his father's untimely passing, Cheng style practitioners considered Cheng Yulong as the most important source of knowledge. For example, 
Cheng Youxin, the youngest son of Cheng Tinghua, could not learn much from him. So after Cheng Tinghua passed away, he studied most of Bagua practice from Cheng Youlong, his eldest brother in Tianjin. Right now, the most popular Cheng style Bagua practice in Beijing was mostly taught by Cheng Youxin, the youngest son of Cheng Tinghua. Who learned most of his practice from his eldest brother Cheng Youlong? However, Cheng Youlong moved to Tianjin, and many Cheng style Bagua practitioners learned from Cheng Youxin. As a result, Cheng Youlong's name was not very commonly mentioned in the Beijing Bagua community. No wonder nowadays there are not many people who know about Cheng Youlong. It is very common that a not so recognized person actually played a key role in the development of a style. Lack of information about a key person of the style is a result of many factors, especially the promotion of a teacher by his students. Cheng Youlong passed away in 1929 in Tianjin. Many people in Tianjin avoid talking about the reason behind his death. Often, they just say he died of old age. Actually, he was not very old when he passed away. I'd like to share this part of his life with the community today. This was what I heard, but I can't fully confirm it at this point. Li Jinglin. A former warlord in the Republic period of China, and one of the main founders of the first government-sponsored National Martial Art Academy in modern China, wanted to practice Bagua with Cheng Youlong. Unfortunately, Cheng Youlong had a reputation for being conservative in teaching, so he presented some very expensive gifts. To Cheng Youlong, and one of the gifts was some high-quality opium. After Cheng Youlong became addicted, Li Jinglin kept supplying opium to him in order to continue learning Bagua. Eventually, Cheng Youlong decided to quit opium, and he succeeded. This was another reason why he locked himself at the Jingye Temple. A great place to avoid opium back then. Even though he quit opium, the damage to his health was already done and soon proved fatal. I heard this information back when I was a kid dur during my grandfather's conversation with his uh, martial art friends. Again, I can't confirm its uh, veracity, but regardless, I'd like to share it with the community. <coughs> Let's now talk about Cheng Youlong's practice in the next topic. Topic 2. Cheng Youlong's Practice Cheng Youlong practiced with his father, Cheng Tinghua, until the latter's untimely death. He systematically learned his father's style. Also, due to the convenience of learning other styles, he practiced Yang style Tai Chi from Yang Jianhou and Liu Dequan. Yang Jianhou was the son of Yang Luchan, the founder of Yang style Tai Chi. Liu Dequan studied Tai Chi as well as Xing Yi from Liu Qilan and Ba Gua from Dong Haichuan. So, Cheng Youlong learned Cheng style Ba Gua and middle frame Yang style Tai Chi. More importantly, he integrated Tai Chi practice into his Cheng style Ba Gua practice in his senior years, which elevated his Bagua practice to a whole new level. I will elaborate on this aspect later in the contribution section of this video. We all know that Cheng Tinghua's training background was Chinese wrestling, a very effective and practical system parallel to Kung Fu. Based on many senior Bagua practitioners' statements that I heard back when I was a child. 
the first generation of Cheng style bagua created and practiced by Cheng Tinghua applied a lot of wrestling movements directly into the bagua form. In other words, Cheng Tinghua's bagua was bagua plus wrestling. Later on, Cheng Youlong improved Cheng style bagua by integrating wrestling techniques seamlessly into Cheng style without any obvious trace. So, Cheng Youlong's bagua does not seem to have the obvious wrestling techniques as other branches but are integrated into the system at a much higher level. He studied Yang style Tai Chi mainly from two teachers. He is considered the founder of Ba Gua Tai Chi. Sometimes people say his teacher Liu De Guan was the founder. Most community members agree that Cheng Youlong was the founder since Liu De Guan only created some basic movements without integrating these two styles together. It was Cheng Youlong who systematically integrated Yang style Tai Chi and Cheng style Ba Gua together, which is the requirement of the style. Unfortunately, Ba Gua Tai Chi had never been promoted as other styles since Cheng Youlong did not share it with many people. Cheng cherished that style so much that he only taught it to some people in private whom he deemed worthy. I only saw some demonstrations back when I was a child in Tianjin. Again, when I was a child, I had so many opportunities to learn many styles from many great teachers. So, I always told myself that I was busy and I would learn them in the future. Later on, when I actually wanted to learn those arts, they just disappeared. Well, lesson learned. Now, I tell myself, if you see something interesting, learn it ASAP. In Cheng Yonglong's time, there were quite a few branches of Bagua that were popular in Tianjin, so it was very hard to get recognized back then. But due to his skill level, his practice was one of the most popular. It was not because he was Cheng Tinghua's son, but because he was talented and worked very hard. So, when Cheng Youlong moved to Tianjin, especially after he moved to the Jingye Temple, he made painstaking efforts to improve his Cheng style Bagua by integrating his father's teaching with Yang style Tai Chi from Yang Jianhou into a new style Bagua Tai Chi. As a result, his Bagua practice reached a very advanced level. Bagua Tai Chi was the real integration, not a haphazard mixing of two styles, which became a key characteristic of Cheng Youlong's Bagua. So, what are the key characteristics of Cheng Youlong's Bagua? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3 Key Characteristics of Cheng Youlong's Bagua. In the old days, a lot of principles were taught verbally without any systematic organization of content. That has only made later generations' learning more challenging. I have practiced Cheng Youlong style Bagua for at least four decades now. Fortunately, I have met many teachers of the older generations and witnessed their practices. Based on my study, practice, and teaching, I have summarized these six characteristics of Cheng Youlong's Bagua. Some of them may be shared by other branches. Regardless, it is worthwhile to point them out. They are first, Wai Kou Li Bu Zhi, second, Chu Shou Xiao Quan Hui Shou Da Quan, third, Chu Shou Zhi Hui Shou Quan, fourth, Jin Li Nei Han, fifth, Kou Bu Shen Suo Bai Bu Shen Zhan, sixth, Jin Li Tong Dong Wai Xing Hu Lian. Now, let me explain them one by one. First, Wai Kou Li Bu Zhi. 
outside foot turns inward, while the inside foot also turns a little. In most of the Cheng style stepping method, the inside foot should step forward straight while the outside foot turns inward in circle walking. However, Cheng Yulong style turns the inside foot slightly in order to make the hip of the inside circle walking more flexible. It is a subtle turning with an important point as well. Second, Chu Shou Xiao Quan Hui Shou Da Quan. Hand moves outwards with the smaller circle while moving backward with the big circle. Cheng Yong Long form emphasizes this aspect very much compared to other branches. The reason for making a big circle when withdrawing hand backward is to apply Ba Gua fighting strategy easier. In Ba Gua defensive movement, a big circle has a better chance of changing the opponent's power direction. Third, Chu Shou Zhi Hui Shou Quan strike with straight power while withdrawing with a circular movement. A striking movement is comparatively straight in order to reach the opponent faster, while withdrawing the hand backward is rather circular to borrow the opponent's power and lead it backward, a commonly used Ba Gua fighting strategy. So, Cheng Yulong used this method to balance the inward and outward movement to deal with defense and offense in Ba Gua applications. For example, the single chain pump, when the hand attack outward, it is a comparatively straight movement, but the backhand makes a much bigger circle when moving inward. Fourth, Jin Li Nei Han. Martial power should be contained. It is a very important characteristic of Cheng Yulong style Ba Gua. Even when working on some extended movements, Cheng Yulong still emphasized on containing martial power instead of sending everything out in power execution. This is why Cheng Yulong's form contains a lot of circular movements. It is especially obvious when the hand changes direction. In other words, an extended movement should still maintain a balance between extension and contraction in terms of power releasing practice. For example, the Qing Long Tan Ra posture, the outward pushing motion made by the outward hand is not something that should be as extended as possible, but instead, it is an opening posture with an obvious inward holding energy. Fifth, Kou Bu Shen Suo, Bai Bu Shen Ran. When the foot turns inward, the body posture contracts. When the foot turns outward, the body posture extends. Cheng Yulong Ba Gua emphasized this body method in training. When working on Kou Bu, or one foot moves toward another foot, for example, when changing direction in Ba Gua circle walking, the body should sink downward. When the foot extends outward or in a Bai Bu position, the body should extend upward slightly. The coordination between stepping and the body vertical motion is a key factor in Ba Gua power generation. Without this, a Ba Gua practitioner may not be able to maintain balance while changing circle direction. For example, the Ye Di Changhua or flower hides under the leaf and the Qing Long Fan Shen or black dragon turns backward are two examples of applying Kou Bu and Bai Bu, the inward and outward turning, that perfectly demonstrate this concept. Six, Jin Li Tong Dong, Wai Xing Hu Lian. Power in the body should execute together while the 
external body part should be connected together. This characteristics looks very simple, but actually it is not so at all. Very often, people only understand it mechanically instead of understanding it at a martial energy level. For example, in the famous Zou Ma Huo Qin or Capture Alive, one riding a horse, when a hand is making an outward and backward capturing motion, the other hand should extend forward in order to make the power work in different directions simultaneously. This is a typical Cheng style Bagua movement, which was borrowed from wrestling movement by Cheng Dinghua. Regarding the body movements, especially utilizing both hands, when one body part moves, the other part follows, often at varying speeds, and does not just stay there without any motion. This method can maximize the generated martial power. So, those were just some basic Cheng Yu Long branch principles. Please pay attention to those while practicing his branch of Bagua. Now, let's look at his contribution in the next topic. Topic 4 Contribution Cheng Yu Long, the elder son of Cheng Dinghua, became the main Cheng style disseminator of his father's practice. As mentioned earlier, after his father's untimely passing, further development of this style could have ceased without some important students of Cheng Dinghua carrying his work forward. Cheng Yulong took the responsibility of such a challenge and kept working on the development and dissemination of that style. Cheng Yulong not only continued teaching what he learned from his father, but more importantly, he also integrated other internal styles, especially Tai Chi practice, into the system. As one of the founders, if not the founders of Bagua Tai Chi, he added the Bagua body method into Tai Chi. He earned his reputation and position in the community due to his Bagua practice. So, he integrated Tai Chi principles and wrestling techniques into Bagua in a more integrated way. It was an important improvement and further development of this style. Cheng Yulong improved Cheng style by making it more internal. Adjusted Cheng style the Bagua stepping method and hand movements for better coordination between the body movements and the stepping used in martial application. Emphasized martial energy transmission between different body parts during practice. All of which are his important contributions to the development of Cheng style Bagua. Many years ago, I used the term middle pulsar bagua to describe Cheng Yulong's practice. A balanced approach in dealing with the body extension practice while maintaining a body structure more in according with the internal style principles. Speaking from personal observation, both high pulsar, especially the body structure taught by his younger brother Cheng Yuxin, and low Pulsar Bagua, such as the body structure taught by other Cheng family members, have advantages. Then, the combination of these two methods, in other words, the middle pulsar taught by Cheng Yulong, can not only take advantage of both lower body and upper body in a more natural way, but can also generate powerful martial force in a circular way, making the middle pulsar branch more internal. It is worth noting that Cheng Yulong never stopped working on his practice. Also, due to his intensive and diverse training background, he would teach 
his uh, students different ways of the same form according to their training background. For example, he taught different set of 8 big palms practice of Cheng style in Tianjin. As a result, we can see different ways of 8 big palms in the community today. When I was in my teenage years, I visited and practiced with many different Cheng Yulong branch teachers and tried to collect as much as I could. So, for the last 20 years, I have been reorganizing different practices collected from different teachers over the years into a single cohesive system. That is what I have been working on to further develop this style of Bagua. To summarize, Cheng Yulong profoundly improved Cheng style Bagua practice. I hope more and more people will practice this style going forward. Topic 5 Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate one of Cheng Yulong's Bagua movements. The name of the movement is Bei Shen Xian Guo, turning the body and present the fruit. Okay, Bei Shen Xian Guo. Topic 6 Takeaways and Inspiration After Cheng Tinghua's untimely passing, Cheng Yulong, his elder son, took the responsibility of developing and teaching Cheng Style Bagua. Without him, Cheng Style Bagua might not have been what it is today. Integrating but not just adding some extra movement into a style. Cheng Yulong practiced Bagua as his main style, but he was also good at Tai Chi. Then, he systematically integrated these two styles together as Bagua Tai Chi. Further, he also incorporated some Tai Chi principles into Bagua training, which was a great way to improve the style. His natural body structure Focus made his style grateful not only health benefits, but also for very effective Bagua application. Unfortunately, he did not have a chance to develop other training content such as 64 pounds. That is why, for more than 10 years now, I have been working on this part, and I hope that style will keep developing and be available to more and more Bagua practitioners. That's end for today's video. Thanks for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.